So anyone just joining, if you could, uh, in the chat window, and introduce yourself, where you're from. And I think we're, we want to get let Carol get started. She has yeah, a sure. brief presentation, and then she'll, t she'll answer moderator questions and your questions. Yeah, so hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Carol, and I uh, work at Google, obviously, and I run the Google Summer of Code program, uh, which we just launched and announced for 2012. So um, I have a couple slides I wanted to show you, just basically to kind of give you some an overview of kind of how the program works. Um, I'm sure you're probably somewhat familiar with, with it already, but I just want to give you sort of a brief overview for those of you who might, might not be as familiar with how it, how it works. Uh, so let me, let me share this uh, slide share with you. Let's see if we can get this to uh, work for everyone. Okay, all right, I think that's going. Um, so basically, uh, Summer of Code was, uh, was envisioned about uh, eight years ago now uh, by Larry Page. And the idea was that basically uh, we wanted to give back to the open source software development community. And the way that we, and get more developers into the community as a whole. And the way that we wanted to do this was to basically pair outside organizations uh, that were working in the open source software space with student developers who would work on a project over the summertime. So um, basically, it's a program that is designed to encourage college student participation in open source development. Uh, students are work on uh, projects over the summertime for their mentoring organizations and are paid a stipend uh, for having done so. And the mentoring organization is paid a, a small stipend as well for having mentored those students. And hopefully those students stay involved after the summertime and become uh, regular contributors and developers in those communities. So that's basically uh, kind of the point and that's why we run GSOC every year. Um, here's a, a list of kind of the, the overall uh, goals that you can just, uh, you can quickly uh, take a look over. Um, but basically, this is a, a great program that gives students exposure to how it is to really work on real, real world software development uh, scenarios. It uh, gets more developers into the community. It gets open source, more open source development overall, which uh, both Google and the open source community as a whole benefit from. Um, and it, it basically uh, gives its, the students an opportunity to, to work um, on a project over the summertime and you know, get some extra cash and some, and some more software experience. Um, let me uh, flip through these slides. So basically, um, what, so basically the, the way it works is that the first thing in the, in the, the first phase of the program is that we have uh, a, we choose mentoring organizations. Basically mentoring organizations apply and then uh, Google as chooses the, the organizations that we want to participate in the program. Uh, last year that was 175 different open source organizations. Uh, we, accept, uh, we expect probably similar numbers this year as well. Um, and then once those organizations have been accepted, uh, basically students start to talk to those organizations about the projects that they would like to work on for the, for the orgs. Uh, they write proposals and then those proposals are ranked and a number of slots are given to each of the organizations and the organizations basically choose which projects are the best and uh, those projects end up being the ones that we accept. Uh, last year we accepted 1,115 students into the program, which is a great number, a uh, hu huge number of students. Uh, and they're students all over the world, um, so they get to participate in this program entirely online. Uh, they can work in their pajamas if they like. Um, and they uh, work with their mentoring organizations over IRC, over mailing lists, over chat. Uh, it's all done electronically, uh, which is great. And then the students work for about three months on those projects, and, um, and then they're given a mid uh, well, they work for about a month and a half, and they're given a midterm evaluation. And then if they pass that midterm evaluation, they work for about another month and a half, and they're in, then given a final evaluation. Uh, and then uh, if they're successful in both of those, they're uh, paid their stipends uh, accordingly for each of those uh, evaluations that they pass. So uh, let me just give you some dates that I think are pretty important. Um, the first date is basically February 27th. That's when we're going to start uh, accepting applications from our open source organizations and those application, that application window for mentoring organizations is open until March 9th. Uh, so basically starting in six days we're going to open the window and any uh, org 
open source software organization that would like to part to apply to participate can uh, can apply within that window, and then they have until March 9th. And then starting on March, the week of March 12th, basically, we're going to be discussing and looking over all of those applications. Uh, we get a lot of them, and we look over each one of them individually. And then March 16th is when we announce which organizations will be participating for this year. Um, and then in the interim period before student applications open, basically we expect that the organizations are going to start getting approached by those student developers who are interested in working with them and uh, starting to talk about what potential projects they might be interested in working on. And then let me just give you a few more dates. Uh, I won't read all of these, but I think the, the important ones for you guys to note are uh, March 26th is when the student application period opens. Uh, so that's basically the point at which students can start applying. And then they have, again, a two-week window that goes until April 26th, sorry, April 6th uh, when they can apply. And then basically uh, between April 6th and April 23rd is when all of those orgs are going to be looking over all those proposals, uh, of which we get many thousands, um, and they're going to be deciding which ones they would like to participate in the program this year. Uh, and then students are announced on April 23rd. And then after, actually after that uh, is basically when the coding starts um, and students start to get uh, involved with their, their communities and everything. So that, those are all the dates that I wanted to go over with you, and that's kind of the overview of the program. So let me take the screen share off for a second. And um, let me, I, actually, why don't I uh, read off the uh, moderator questions, Van? What do you think about that? Uh, sure. Well, we, we can do like uh, we do at TGIFs, where you, take a, you do a moderator question or two, and then you take one from the audience. Yes, they, yes. How, how about I do that? So I'll take, uh, I'll take the most, the, but, uh, the most uh, highly rated uh, question at first, and then we can take ones from the audience. But, but I, I have one first question before the moderator, which is, sure. can we get a link to your slides? Uh, yes, you can. Um, it, should I just put it in the chat window, you think? Yeah, if you do that, I can share it with the organizers later, all yeah, of them, sure. if, if you're so, okay with that. Uh, yes, absolutely. Let me get let me get the direct link uh, so that you guys have it, and I will put it put it in the chat window. So hold on just a second. Uh, actually, let me just give you a link to all the different possible formats that you could be <laughs> that you could possibly want. This presentation. Yes. So so that's a, that's basically the presentations in PowerPoint. Uh, LibreOffice and uh, PDF format, so <laughs> you can have whichever one you would like the most. <laughs> and so you're okay with them taking these, like, and sharing it with their local. Absolutely, yeah. Those are those are meant to be shared. Those are meant to be, you know, if you would like to do this presentation again to talk to other people to encourage them to participate, please do. Like that's why we have them available is so that people will use them Great. and share them. Yes. Great. So okay. let me take the, uh, the highest rated question off the moderator, which is, hi, I need to know how Google is planning to manage locally this program in each country. So in Cameroon, and how, when registered in this program, will I work with Google in spite of your absence here in our area? So the answer to that is uh, it's all done online. And basically the way, uh, so it's all administered from Google Melange. And let me give you the uh, link to Google Melange. Uh, and uh, everything is administered from Melange. Basically, uh, applications are administered there. Project proposals are submitted there. Uh, students are ranked and proposals are accepted there. And um, all of the work that a student developer does with their community and with their open source organization is all done online. So in IRC, on mailing lists, in chat, uh, everything. There are some students who choose to go visit their mentors or their mentoring organizations over the summer. But that's not, not required, and that's entirely up to the student and the organization's discretion. So uh, basically, the only thing you are expected to do as a student developer is to be available online for, uh, for the majority of the summer, which basically sort of amounts to a full-time job, basically 40 hours a week. Uh, it's usually about how much time students allocate to this program. So let's uh, take a question from the audience. Does anybody have a question they'd like to throw out there? Is it a little too early? <laughs> Come on, Juan. Well, you can even ask your moderator a question. Uh, okay, I just uh, I actually posted on moderator. So my my first question was, um, w how viable do you see uh, for GTAX to uh, become um, selectable for mentoring organizations? So what structure, um, what requirements do you think we should we should comply with? 
Yeah, so we have a whole uh, list of requirements that we, that we uh, have for mentoring organizations. Um, so let me share that with you. Basically, basically the, what it boils down to is uh, you need to have uh, the time and you need to have mentors available. And you're, you need to be releasing software under an OSI approved license. That's kind of what it boils down to is if, is if you or the organization that you work with or the people that you work with are already releasing software um, under an open source license, uh, then ba and basically, and you have the time and the mentor capacity to participate, then you can. Let me give you a direct link to uh, to what the uh, what requirements are for mentoring organizations. Let me put that into the chat window. Hold on just a second. Um, so basically, uh, yeah, what it boils down to is that you need to be releasing software as as uh, already under an open source approved license. Great, great. Yeah. So you usually take uh, companies which, uh, organizations which are already releasing software. Yeah, correct. Um, I know that we have had some uh, some people in the past who have uh, have basically wanted to participate in Summer of Code in order to become an open source organization. They, they might have been releasing software previously under a proprietary license or, or something like that, or sorry, they might have been working in a proprietary form and they wanted to to use, uh, it, sorry, is that, uh, is that a broken link? Let me check. It worked for me. It worked? Okay, it worked for you. All right, so maybe, uh, uh, all right. Uh, anyway, uh, sorry, so uh, we have had some people who wanted to participate in GSOC and to, to start open sourcing their software as a part of the program. Unfortunately, we're not really set up for that. Uh, we, we really want you to have already been established as releasing software uh, in an open source capacity already. Okay, that's right. So that probably brings us to my second question, which was, do you have a list of uh, organizations which are looking for mentors to organize, uh, do mentor organizations uh, usually recruit uh, outside uh, mentors for them or? Um, some do. Uh, so, so unfortunately, because we haven't had op the mentoring organizations apply yet, I can't tell you which organizations are gonna be participating. Uh, so I don't know which, which organizations to direct you to. Um, however, what I can do is I can give you a link to the organizations that participated last year. Um, and you can look that list over and see if any of them look like organizations that you might be interested in just in, to getting involved with and contributing to in general. Mm -hmm. um, and then if they participate in GSOC this year, you could potentially offer your, your mentor uh, capabilities. Another option is that you could just wait until we announce which mentor organizations are going to be participating, and then you could approach an organization that you're interested in working with and say, you know, I have experience doing X, Y, and Z, and I'd like to offer my services as a mentor. Um, and, and a lot of organizations, especially the smaller ones, um, can absolutely use the help uh, and, and might mm -hmm. want to. So I would, I would just encourage you to have that conversation with them and see, see what, what's possible. Okay. Sounds great. Thanks a lot, Carl. You're welcome. Thank you. Shall I take another moderator question, or shall I take another question from the audience? Do a moderator one, and those, moderator. those of you in the audience be thinking of your next question. All right. Um, uh, so I think I already answered the second one, which is uh, we were planning to propose our GTEC as a mentoring organization. That yeah, was that's one. Juan's question. Yeah. So that let me go to the next one. Um, uh, to jo join with you at Summer of Code, uh, what should we do? Is there a requirement to the participants other than age? Uh, what types of projects can we participate in? Uh, web applications, Java, right? Um, so we get this question a lot. So um, uh, yes, there are a few other requirements other than age uh, for, for the student developers. Uh, one is that you have to be currently enrolled in, a, in a, an accredited university. So, uh, and uh, by the way, uh, it, it is a common misconception that you have to be in uh, working in an undergraduate capacity. You don't. Uh, you can be working on any degree. It could be a master's degree, a PhD, or a bachelor's degree, uh, whichever you like. Um, and then uh, beyond that, you do need to be over 18. Uh, and let me actually just get you guys the direct link for that as well. Um, and uh, there we go. Let me put this in the chat window. There we go. All right. And um, and as to which projects uh, 
you might be interested in working in. Um, one of the things that we have the mentoring organizations do when they apply is that one of the parts of their application is they have to provide what we call an ideas list, which is essentially sort of um, an, a, a big list of the things within their organization that they might want a student developer to work on, things that they think would fit into sort of a three-month project and that, a, and that a student would be well suited to work on. So as part of their application, they provide this ideas list. And so when we ex have the uh, list of the organizations which have been accepted, all of those ideas lists are posted on their home pages. And the best thing that a student can do who's interested in working with a particular organization is to find the organization you're interested in working in, and then look at their ideas list and see what are the sorts of things that, that they could use the most help on. And then what I would encourage that student to do is to then go directly to that organization and say, hey, this project and this project both look interesting to me and I'd like to work on them. Here are my skills and here's what I bring to the table and then have a conversation with that organization about what that project might be able to look like and what you might be able to do. Um, that conversation is best had directly with the organization about what kinds of projects they would like to work on. And often, you know, new ideas can come out of those conversations or uh, kind of similar but, but slightly different project ideas can come out and, and we can make it work according to what your skills are. Um, so have, have that conversation with the organization once you have, uh, once the organizations have been accepted and you've identified an org you'd like to work with. So. Carol, a quick question. Is mm -hmm. a student assignment up to the organization or does Google uh, yeah, yes, it is. Uh, Google doesn't have any, uh, any, any say in that. Um, however, uh, students are allowed to submit up to 20 applications. Um, most don't. <laughs> most only submit one or two. Uh, but students can apply to multiple organizations. Um, and so organizations often have to choose amongst a lot of really good developers. But yes, uh, which students organizations want to choose is left entirely up to that organization. All right, uh, will I take one more from the, um, uh, one more from the moderator. Uh, will students recently, recent graduates con uh, contact directly the mentoring organizations or you as a Googler for any developer related questions? Uh, a great question and yeah, so uh, basically you should contact the organization directly. So as I said, uh, we haven't accepted mentoring organizations yet, so we can't have those conversations quite yet. Uh, but in just a couple weeks, uh, we will be announcing which organizations are participating. And the developers should absolutely go directly to those organizations that they're interested in working with and talking to them about their project ideas. OK, um, I think so he has a quick question. I can yeah. find it through the windows here. Where is he? There we go. Yep, go ahead, Vadik. Yep, you're on. Make sure you're not muted. <laughs> Vadik? Well, okay, well, you want to ask your question in the chat window? Yeah, just ask in the chat window, that's fine. Great. While you're doing that, um, is there anyone that... We'll see how fast he types. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, Vadik. <laughs> We're all waiting. <laughs> you can do it. Uh, no, seriously, if someone else has a question they want to ask while he's typing his in. Um. Oh, uh, about the, the stipend question. Oh, did you get your mic working? I heard it. You got it. I participated in GSOC last year. It's a great program. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, a lot of students dropping out are not clearing the program. Really? Um, we have... We have about an 89 to 90% success rate each year for students. So I'm surprised actually to, uh, to hear that. Is Google taking any measures to suggest organizations to reduce that? Um, uh, I, I actually, uh, do you feel like there are a lot of students that, that aren't, aren't making the program? I mean, we, we have about an 89 to 90% success rate each year. I wonder if uh, I wonder if this is about getting into the program at the first place and not actually. Oh, uh, get oh being accepted. Oh, I see. It, I, no, I'm not. I don't know that's what he's saying, but th that would make more sense from what you said. But oh, uh, okay. Uh, yes, it is the case that uh, we have. I, I would consider GSOC a pretty uh, uh, prestigious program, and uh, we have a lot of great applicants that we choose amongst. 
Um, but it is a not so secret way to be accepted into GSOC, which is to start contributing and start uh, working as a developer for that or organization which you're interested in working in well before the application period for GSOC actually starts. Uh, one of the best, easiest ways to get accepted into GSOC is to prove that you're not just interested in participating in GSOC for that three month period, but that you're interested in becoming a full time developer for that organization and that your GSOC project is just an extension of that. Um, we have a lot of people who apply to the organization simply because they want to get the money and not because they're actually interested in the organization or in the project. And unfortunately, that's not the sort of person that we're looking for. We're looking for developers who really want to become strong members of the community and, and full-time developers for those organizations. Uh, so uh, if you're not talking and you're typing, if you could mute, that would be great. <laughs> uh, uh, so there's another question in the chat window. Uh, yep. I, think, I think there might be a confusion there because uh, I, I, university, it's, the, it's organizations, not universities, generally that mentor, right? Uh, so, uh, well, I, I can see why that would be confusing. We do have a couple uh, universities that participate as mentoring organizations each year, but usually those universities that participate, it's the IT department or a very small portion of that university which participates as a mentoring organization. As a whole, uh, most of the mentoring organizations, probably upwards of 90% of them, are open source software organizations. Uh, but I could see why that would be confusing. We do have some universities that participate, but it's only a few. But it's the case, right, that uh, it's really not a question for Google. It's a question for them to, to if they want their university involved, they should find yes, someone you should at the university. To that university. They need yes. to find someone at the university to apply for the mentoring. Program. Exactly, yes. If you, if you would like that university to participate, you should have them apply during the application period for mentoring organizations. Correct. Okay. okay uh, are there any other questions from the audience? Uh, let me actually answer that, that stipend question that I think you had, Van. Okay. Um, so the answer is that um, organizations are paid uh, directly by Google at the end of the year after they've, uh, after they've mentored the students. But the students dur during, the, during the summer, during the program, are paid directly by Google. So the mentoring organization doesn't have any involvement in the payment of the students. The only thing that they do is, is uh, submit those evaluations of the students to let us know whether or not they passed or failed and whether or not they should be paid. But those payments go directly to the student from Google. I hope that helps. Does, does that answer your question, Juan? Yeah, actually, actually that was my next question. So we do not need to provide any sort of invoice as uh, payment is done straight, uh, straight with the students. What about the, the organization, the mentoring organization per se? Um, yeah, so, uh, we, so yes, at the end of the summer, um, each organization is entitled to $500 per student that they mentored, and that payment is made directly from Google again. However, um, if you're not set up or don't want to receive that payment, you don't have to. Uh, we don't require that you take the money. Uh, you're welcome <laughs> to have participated in free if you'd like. Um, but if you do want the money, the way that that ha it, basically it has to be administered directly with us. You'll have to be set up as a supplier with Google, and then we'll submit you. A, uh, we'll give you a PO, and then you invoice us against that. That's all taken care of at the end of the year, though. I wouldn't worry too much about that. That's kind of that, that happens much later in the year, and, and it's kind of it, there's a lot of ways to, to work around it. So if that's don't consider that kind of a major concern for you. Okay. All right. Any more questions or anything else I can help with? I have another one, but I don't want to get into anyone's way. So <laughs> no. there's another uh, question. Going once. Well, actually, uh, let me just put my email in the chat window as well. If you guys would like to email me directly with any questions, uh, you're also more than welcome to do that. Um, I'm happy to answer questions offline if that's helpful. If you have a specific thing that you don't think would be applicable here, uh, you're more than welcome to do that. I don't know if there's a question in what Abdul Rahman just put in the uh, chat window. Looks like more of a statement than a question. Uh, yeah, it does. Uh, 
Which is okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, if I mean, again, if you're interested in, in particular s projects or technologies, I would encourage you to work directly with that organization, with the organizations that you're interested in working with, and contact <coughs> them about your skills and what projects you're interested in working on, and work with directly with them about for it. Are there any, any actual Google projects going to these programs? Um, we have in the past had a, a few uh, applications participate, um, but as a whole, uh, the Google uh, generally don't. But we, from time to time, we have had we ha have had a couple. I think we had App Engine participate a few years ago, uh, and a couple others, um, but uh, not not too much. Uh, this is I mean this is really intended to be a program for for other for organizations outside of Google. Um, we we're really trying to help the open source software community as a whole thrive, and having lots of Google part projects participate wouldn't actually work that well for that. <laughs> um, right. Carol, do you, think, do you think it might, just a quick question, do you think yeah. it might be possible for us to get uh, a list of uh, the participating students in our area? Um, no, unfortunately, we don't release that sort of information just to protect the students' privacy. Uh, a lot of students mm -hmm. don't want uh, people to know where they live uh, for obvious reasons. Um, right. So we do we do uh, announce uh, anonymized statistics about the number of students that are participating from various countries um, and how those how those uh, you know the basically uh, sort of the top ten participating countries and as represented by number of students, um, but. Uh, we, we, we don't release um, where students specifically are from simply be to protect their privacy. Mm -hmm. hey, Juan, I'm wondering if we could do this in the reverse direction. I, I'm not sure why you wanted the names, but would it be helpful? Actually, uh, well, yeah, if, if I could send you a message and you could, uh, you could forward it to all local developers. Uh, yes, I'm, I am. Well? Yes, I am happy to do that. Uh, if there, uh, yes, if there's students participating that you would like to spend, send them. You know, you know, there's a hackathon going on in your country, sort of, sort of email. Um, I'm happy to send that along. We we have a specific uh, part of their profile where they can opt in to notifications from us, and that'll be sent to the students who have opted into that. Uh, yes, I'm happy to do that. Uh, and I'm also thinking, uh, Carol, that I might want to send Craft one message about the GTUG program in general. Uh -huh. and kind of make it an invitation to them to consider reaching out to their local GTUG with a link to the directory where they can find the, the local one and just saying, if you're interested in talking about your experiences at the end of the program, yeah, uh, you know, please contact your local GTUG and offer to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, um, that would that would be great. Okay. Yeah. We should do that. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand the you know you can't be like giving out their personal contact information that kind of thing. But yeah, I think this will meet the need. This will meet most of the need. I think just making them aware of the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can we can uh, we can send a, a message to them. But we just can't have you send a message directly to them. <laughs> I, I I understand. I okay. Mean, Fair it'd like someone, it'd be like someone would be asking me to give everybody's per personal email addresses that I have for GTUG organizing. Yeah. I'm not going to just give that out to anybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, well, thanks everyone for coming. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys uh, are help spread the word and maybe participate yourself or or let other people know uh, if they can participate. Um, it would be great to have more people. We we love making spreading the word about this program. Well, well, thank you, Carol. Thank okay. you, Carol, for uh, doing this with us today, and uh, thank everyone else for coming out with their questions. And we'll. For anyone that missed it, we'll be doing this all over again at 5 p.m. Yeah. And I, am, I did record this, so if the recording turns out, yeah. uh, I can make this one available later as well for anyone that misses it. Great. So thanks, everyone. Thanks, Have a good Bye, day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks a lot, Carol. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.